What's going on everybody? I'm John and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. Today's topic, Ship Crewmen. What's the creepiest thing you've seen while out on the ocean? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Enjoy. Not creepy, but gross. I was chumming and cutting bait at 5am on Jeffrey's Ledge in New England. I kept hearing weird splashing sounds every few minutes, but it was still dark. I was a newbie at the time. Around 5.30 I could see a little better, but not great. I think I kept seeing a buoy looking like a giant road cone popping up out of the water, then it would disappear again. I was full on what the F. Captain comes out on deck and catches me staring off into the sea. He looks out. The road cone pops up a few hundred yards off. He looks back at me and starts laughing his ass off. How long you been watching that whale masturbate? Humpback whales masturbate by rolling around on the surface of the water using the splash as friction. This was over 30 years ago. We were living aboard a 22-foot O'Day, our first boat. We pulled into a dock and were trying to sleep. We heard the crackling sound, almost like twigs burning. It was very concerning. I was trying to figure out what was wrong with my boat. Our neighbor didn't help. He said it was fiberglass worms. Apparently, this is some mollusk that attaches itself to the hull and clicks in some ways that the hull picked up and amplified. Worked for a bit as a deckhand on fishing boats out of San Diego. A few times, we would come across deserted smaller boats, pangas, drifting with outlandishly big motors. Every time the captain would just cut hard port or starboard, to get away from them as quick as possible. I knew they were drug running boats that had probably dropped off their cargo, but I would check them out with the binoculars if we were close. One had two people on it. Both had clearly been shot a bunch of times, and one was moving a fairly alive. I told the captain, got a disapproving head shake, and we were on our way. The doldrums. You spend a year or two at sea watching the waves and winds are blowing constantly, and then one day they stop. Not so much as a whisper of wind and the sea is like glass. It feels as if time has stopped. Realizing how creepy it feels, the captain calls for an all stop and goes dead in the water. Like a horror movie, everyone migrates topside and just stares to the horizon. No one says a word and you can hear yourself breathe. He lets the ship rest there for an hour and the sailors freak out. Panic can set in quickly with a green crew. The only thing the captain says when we get underway is, men. This is the doldrums. Bastard knew what he was doing. 1. First day on my first ship ever. It's winter and like 30 degrees and the steel bulkheads, racks, beds, etc. are cold. Shipmate is nice enough to give me a small electric alarm clock to use the next morning. I climb in my rack and put the alarm over my head, kind of under the pillow, and crash. 2 a.m. I wake up after feeling something weird. Something just ran across my boot camp shaved head. I open my eyes and stare into the darkness. Then something else runs across my head. I turn on my overhead light in the rack and about two dozen roaches run for their lives. They were nesting on my alarm clock and my head to keep warm. Yes, this was a new guy joke. Yes, I used it later on someone else. No, it was almost 30 years ago and I haven't forgotten. I still feel them sometimes. Two, same ship, out to sea. Took a shortcut through the civilian's birthing bedrooms area about 15 of them were sitting around a TV watching animal porn. Some were laughing, but others were too focused. Those others. 3. Another ship out to sea. What emergencies happen, it doesn't matter who you are, sometimes you have to get dirty. A line ruptured and flooded several spaces with pitch black oil about neck high. On top of that, we were sure there were a few bodies in there. Me and a buddy had to climb into the oil pool and wade through two rooms to get the pumps placed and confirm other things. Power is cut off, of course, so we had nothing but flashlights. Yes, we found one of the bodies. The other guy was actually elsewhere napping on the job, probably saved his own life. There's plenty more, but those are the first three. Woke up at 3 a.m. to a search and rescue alarm, former Coastie. I book it to the boat. We launch and end up cruising along for a few hours. Everything is pitch black. One of the crew members are looking over the side at the bioluminescent algae being kicked up by our wake and says he saw something big roll over in our wake. We explain it if that it was probably a shark and about 15 minutes later, a deep fog sets in. 
The fog is reflecting our running light, so it looks like we are in a hallway or tunnel. Everyone gets a little more tense. We start keeping a close eye on the GPS, and then the thermometer alarm goes off. We are in five feet of ocean. The alarm stops. We are in 300 feet, and then three, then 250, then six feet. Something was swimming very close to the bottom of our boat. It was such an eerie experience. We never figured out what it was, perhaps whales or the kraken. We got to the boat we were rescuing and everything else was uneventful. There's something wonderful about being on the ocean in the middle of the night, but things can be very strange too. I mean, it was probably large marine life, so you're pretty much right, but a kraken would make for a heck of a story. U.S. Marine here. During a float on a boat to Operation Top Secret, Destination Unknown, one of her own were lost at sea. I guess they just jumped overboard at night or something. Kind of depressing. That's a shitty way to die. Anyways, their coffin rack was adjacent to mine, and we left the rack made, and for some reason, the sheets kept on getting messed up every day. It was a pain in the ass to keep making the sheets. We stripped the rack, and we figured that no one should be sleeping in there since there were plenty of other vacant racks in the birthing. But someone would keep making the rack and messing the sheets up in the morning. I know aircraft carriers are big, but could someone really fake their own death on one and get away with it? There's no way someone would be sleeping there because we'd notice someone climbing up on the top bunk and the duty would have been posted at the entrances to the birthing. It was just creepy seeing the rack being made neatly and then messed up in the morning. A friend, a captain, asked me to help deliver a sailboat to from Fort Lauderdale to Houston. I was a somewhat inexperienced sailor, only sailed for fun a few times in short trips, but he was able to get me $100 a day, so I said why not? I was between jobs. It was three of us, me, my captain, who is a very experienced sailor, and the new owner of the ship. Once we got to Anna Maria Island on the west coast of Florida, we prepared for the longest haul of our trip. The first time we'll be away from the coast going through the Gulf of Mexico. We did a four hour shift, then you'd get to sleep or do whatever for eight hours until your next four hours. The eerie part for me was my shift, alone, pitch black darkness in the middle of the ocean, no moon out. You also have to avoid a lot of small oil rigs, some still active, some not active, some marked with lights, some not. You'd hear explainable sounds, etc. I don't know if it was just my head effing with me but that one overnight shift was pretty tense and scary for me. Towards the end of my shift, we hit some pretty bad rain and rough seas. My captain took over, I went to bed. I get woken up a bit later to crazy rough seas. I go back on deck and my captain and the owner of the ship just yell, we have to turn back, we lost our GPS. Apparently, the wind knocked it off the top of the mast and into the ocean. So there we are now, rough seas, pitch black and with no GPS. Luckily, my captain is old school and knows how to sail with just a chart. So we made it back to Anna Maria and purchased a new GPS. The whole event was just surreal and I was definitely worried a few times. The rest of the trip was uneventful. The next nights had nice bright moons, calm seas, and that made it a little less eerie. My buddy and I were about 20 miles west of the Lower Keys in the Gulf of Mexico. We were on his Bertram looking for a dolphin and wahoo when we see a boat in the distance heading our direction. We weren't under power or anything, just drifting and drinking beer. The boat gets closer and we see smoke. It was pretty much a burned out cabin at that point, but still running. It just idled by. We yank our lines up and go run it down. Luckily, no charred corpses that I could see. I kick it into neutral with a gaff and we decide to see where it came from. On the way, we reported its location to the Coast Guard. We drove that general direction for probably 10 miles and didn't see a single thing. No other boats, no life jackets, nothing. Hopefully the people who were on the boat were picked up safely. It was like something from Walking Dead, just a burned out boat floating on by. Not ship crew, but one of three guys sailing a 45-foot Morgan from Antigua to Daytona Beach, Florida. I had zero crossing experience prior to this trip. Anywho, I picture getting tan pina coladas and white sand beaches. Nope, it was open ocean, at least by landlubber standards, and three-hour shifts round the clock manning the helm. 
GPS and radar while the other two guys chilled during the day or slept at night. It was hard as hell, and I've done a few things considered somewhat tough and out of the ordinary. The biggest worry while on autopilot are the bazillions of ships flying around throughout the Caribbean. Yes, you can see them from many miles away, especially at night, and with the help of radar, but they sneak up on you. And a 600-foot freighter captained by a possibly hammered crewman in the wheelhouse at 2 in the morning wouldn't even feel like a bump as it split us into kindling. So, one night I'm on shift, trying to stay awake with Snickers and coffee, and it's so black you couldn't discern the horizon line. Just stars, blackness, and the running lights of lots of far-off freighters going all in directions. I proceed to take my occasional 360-degree glance around like I was told to make sure there's also nothing coming up aft, and oh my effing god, there's a giant round yellow light stretching what seems like across the entire sky directly behind me. Clearly, this was a freighter, directly behind our boat with some kind of a spotlight on the bow trained on us and about to gobble us up like Jonah. The rush of terror was so great, I couldn't even stomp on the deck to awaken my mates, let alone scream for help. So I just accepted my impending death and wondered if it would be the impact or the drowning that killed me first. Then I focused a little harder and realized it wasn't a ship at all. It was a full moon rising. I can't describe the immediate relief. It was like awaking from the most terrifying dream you've ever had and realizing, holy smokes, I'm not running from Freddy Krueger. I'm in my bed. Sailing across a crossing like that, I learned his hours and hours and sometimes days and days of endless boredom punctuated with short periods of DEFCON 10. I've spent time on the ocean from my days in the military and I can tell you that when you cannot see land in any direction for a month plus, it's a surreal experience and makes you feel pretty small in the universe. I worked on a cruise ship going from the UK to Spain and back, cross channel ferry really, but quite big at 37,000 tons and 2,500 passengers. We had a turnaround of about four hours in Bilbo, and at the time, I worked in the restaurant. And after we had cleaned up, they started hailing a passenger over the loudspeaker to disembark. I remember he had a slightly comical name like Passenger Peckham or Passenger Pickles or something. Then the managers came and told us to start searching our stations for him. Every bit of the ship was getting searched, and they kept hailing him and us searching right up until the outbound passengers started embarking. They even had us searching in little cupboards and in fridges, etc. Obviously, passenger pickles had jumped off in the night into the cold Atlantic. So, another time, we were heading off at night during the winter gales, and about five hours offshore around midnight, I finished my shift and headed off to a crafty little platform at the stern where I could toke my nightly reefer in peace and I saw the massive bright ship's spotlights scanning slowly and methodically back and forth across the waves. I guess this was for a jumper, and sitting there slightly baked, I could imagine perhaps glimpsing a last sight of some poor doomed soul struggling in the chop and wake before disappearing off into the vast black expanse of the Atlantic. An office later confirmed that spotlights that night were for someone who had apparently jumped off a ship that had passed in the opposite direction. I don't know if this was creepy exactly, but it sure scared us. Up by Alaska in rough seas, our office was below the waterline on the outside of the ship right below a sponson. There was a full-size I-beam running around the outside edge of the office. It was probably 10 inches wide, and we used it as a shelf, storing full-size binders on it. One day in rough weather, six of us were in the office, three officers, three enlisted, when we heard an enormous bang, so loud that our ears rang, and all of us jumped out of our seats. After checking to make sure we weren't taking on water and calling damage control, we started looking around to determine what could have caused it. We couldn't find anything. Nothing had come loose, nothing had fallen. The dry tank below the office was still dry, etc. We eventually noticed that the I-beam had cracked. Not a hairline fracture, not a little split, but the entire beam had separated lengthwise by about 5 millimeters. We took a wave up under the sponson with so much energy that it bowed in the hull and the ship and split the beam. But the beam didn't even go back to the original length. The crack was also precise and even. You could slide a pencil in the gap all the way back to the bulkhead. In fact, the split was so wide, they couldn't weld it directly closed. 
they had to cut a 5mm shim to fill the gap. It was amazing, and we had hundreds of people come through the office for the next couple of weeks to see it. A couple of people tried to calculate the energy needed to instantly separate the I-beam that was 4 feet away from where we were sitting, but it was too scary to contemplate. That's my creepy story. Hope you enjoyed. I go to a maritime school for the specific reason to be a pirate joke. I had our first time at sea, and I was told during my deck watch to take the helm. It was a clear day, but choppy waters. After I took the helm as a freshman and first time on a boat at all, there were huge waves for us being on a 540-foot cargo ship, which was refitted to be a training ship, added more holds for people to sleep in. So when I was on the helm, I see the whole ship in front of me and the water in front of the ship. We would hit the swells so that at one point you saw nothing but the bow and the blue sky, and the next moment you see nothing but water and the bow, and in between the horizon would quickly pass by. After that I changed my major to engineer. No wonder all those deckies are unbelievably stressed out, and huge assholes, for possibly the same reason. I assume that if there was a school to become a pirate, some people would ironically probably attend it, but engineer was a pretty solid choice as well. I'm not a ship crewman. A buddy of mine is sailing the world and told a story about being adrift on glass smooth seas one evening. He could have turned on his outboard motor, but he was in no rush and fuel can get expensive, so he decided that he'd just wait for wind to eventually come back. So, moonless night, no wind, no waves, but there's a strange mechanical noise out in the ocean. There's no light, so he can't determine what it is and his flashlight is completely useless. He considers that sound can travel a long, long way over a glass smooth ocean, so he's not certain how far away the noise is. He starts considering that maybe it's a submarine, and he wonders to himself if submarines ever surface under other boats. So, the day after he tells this story, I go to work. I worked with the Navy at the time, so I retell his tale and ask, do submarines ever run into other boats out to sea? Oh, yeah, happens all the effing time. Just Google submarine collision. It seldom means good things for the boat that got hit. Other people are joining the conversation to point out that all those collisions you'll read about, keep one thing in mind. They were all under power. They were making noise, and we still just drove right through them. A sailboat? A drift? <laughs> and the ACINT folk chiming in to mention that the transition between underwater and surface is really effing noisy, so it's not like you can tell if something is right above you until it's really too late anyway. So I told my buddy and sent him a link to the Wikipedia article about all these events. It didn't make him feel any better. <laughs>